In this lecture, we'll focus what is a rigid body and flexible body more in detail. So let's talk about, uh, let's consider any arbitrary body I have taken, just like in the previous class. So A and B are two different points and we are just seeing the distance between these two points. So let us consider the distance between point A and point B is five units. Now, if you are pulling it or pushing it or twisting or rubbing, what is going to happen? There is nothing going to happen. The points will remain as they were. Okay. So the location of the point is not changing. Fine. And the distance between these two points is also not changing. Earlier it was five units. Now also it's five units. Now, if you simply rotate it, just like as you can see, I have shown with a direction called clockwise rotation. If you simply rotate it, the orientation of this body changes. That is, initially the body was just inclined like this. It's, it was going up, the point B was going up. But now, since I have rotated it, it seems that point B is going down. Okay, But even then, the distance between A and B and A and B is remaining same, which is 5 units. Clear? Now you tell me one thing, is there, is it there a possibility of existence of any rigid body? So this rigid body does not exist. So you should remember that this rigid body does not exist. It is a hypothetical concept. It is a hypothetical concept. Now I'll be asking sir, why if the body is not existing, then why it has been introduced? Dear, it has been introduced just in order to simplify our calculations and our analysis for the force analysis. Because if we consider all these uh, flexible body forces, then it will become very complicated. So in order to avoid that, we we'll simply assume that these rigid bodies are flexible bodies they become rigid in a very small limited period of distance okay so let us consider we have got a very flexible body but say suppose in a very very minute distance if we talk about so in that limiting sense that flexible body will show the rigid nature okay so all these things we will you will understand more as the lecture goes on but for the time being understand it's an interview question if anyone asks you a give an example of any rigid body then you can first say that first that rigid body does not exist practically it's not possible for a existence of a rigid body it's mere a hypothetical concept but in the limiting sense we can consider a flexible body to be a rigid body in some conditions and situations and what are those conditions and situations we'll talk about we'll talk about this flexible body so let us consider i have taken an arbitrary body and the distance between these two points A and B is 5 units. Now if you are pulling it, what is going to happen? Just imagine if you are pulling it. So if you are pulling, say, uh, let me show you. If you are pulling this from the right hand side, from the left hand side, your common sense says that the body will get stretched, isn't it? So if the body gets stretched, then the distance between the points A and point B is going to increase. So initially it was 5 units now it will change to seven units if you are pushing it how will you show the push if you are pushing it then i will show like this if you are pushing the body then the distance between the points a and point b is going to decrease so from five units it has come down to two units now twisting how will you show twist if you want to show twist i can show like this in this way in this way Okay, like this you are twisting just like you twist the clothes after washing it or twist anyone's hand if you're fighting in your class. So if you are twisting, so in that case also the distance changes. So A or B, the distance here I have shown to be increased, so 6 units. If you are rubbing it, if you are rubbing it, that means if you are simply rubbing it on the surface. So in that case, the distance may, may, may increase or may decrease depending whether you are on which side you are rubbing whether you are rubbing outwards or inwards if you are rubbing outwards then definitely the distance between the points a and b is going to increase which is maybe seven units and if you are rubbing inwards that means initially the position was here so if you are trying to rub it and you have not rubbed it to an extent in order to increase it so in that case the distance will increase rather you are rubbing it by pushing and here we are rubbing it by pulling okay 
so if you are rubbing outwards or rubbing inwards the distance may change it may increase or may decrease so you should note that shear is a surface phenomenon make sure that we are when we rub anything what we do when you rub your hand when you rub your hand come on start rubbing your hand when you rub your hand you are actually rubbing the surface of your hand you are not going inside the your hand or inside your palm right but since it is a surface phenomenon even though it is a surface phenomenon but the internal particles are also getting affected don't think that i am simply rubbing the surface so nothing will happen to the internal particles of the body no if you are rubbing the surface the internal particles will also get affected and we'll talk about more in detail once we introduce the term called stress and we will see how the particles vary inside the body okay so but make sure that uh, shear is a surface phenomenon but the internal particles are also affected not only the surface particles but also the internal particles are also affected <clears throat> moreover if you bend the body say if you are bending it how will you show the bending let's say i am bending this body so once you bend what is going to happen the point a and point b will change that is the distance between point a and point b will change as you can see i have shown the increment in the distance okay because it's being getting elongated okay so point a and point b the distance is going changed and it's some giving some sense of curve shape okay so these are some different effects that you can apply on flexible bodies these are some different actions that you can apply on different flexible bodies so entire strength of materials is based on these that is pulling pushing twisting rubbing and bending okay so the entire domain of your strength of materials lies within this five actions on flexible bodies so here we won't be talking about in this particular subject we won't be talking about more about this rigid body so let's keep aside this rigid body for another course which is engineering mechanics and let's put more focus on this flexible body for this particular course see you in the next lecture till then bye